Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm Zach Peterson, I'm a technical consultant with Altium, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to bring power, specifically from an AC power source, into a board, and then how to route the digital stuff around that power source. This comes from a viewer question where the viewer had an AC power source coming onto a board, and then that gets rectified down to DC, and then that power gets distributed to some digital components. We're gonna take a look at that question, we're gonna talk about how to do the stack up, how to do the ground plane, and when to split the ground plane in this specific situation. Let's go ahead and get started. So this viewer question comes from my LinkedIn. Someone actually messaged me on LinkedIn about this after seeing our earlier videos on mixed signal layout and specifically regarding the recommendations to not split ground planes when you have mixed signals. So let's take a look. So this is the question I got on my LinkedIn and the specific question here relates to this particular type of board where you have a power section with a transformer converting AC mains down to 12 volts. And then of course you have the standard rectifier and then power regulator circuitry. Um, and then that integrates with a digital section and an analog section. So, I mean, this is really a, a highly integrated board where you have everything on one system. Now, it's not like it's, you know, highly specialized or totally out of the ordinary. I mean, this is totally something you can design yourself and go get manufactured and it'll probably work just fine. Um, but this is the specific type of question that we're gonna look at. So the question here came down to this particular recommendation um, where he writes, uh, you said don't split the inner ground plane. Now, it is true that when you're dealing with uh, analog and digital sections in the same board, it is best to not split the ground plane. But here, we also have a power section. So that's what we wanna look at in this particular type of PCB. Okay, so here's the basic type of uh, system that we're dealing with, and I'm gonna draw it out with a block diagram. So we basically have 230 volts AC coming in. Uh, this goes down to a rectifier uh, with a transformer, and then this is gonna go into a regulator. And I believe he was saying, you know, 12 volts is coming out here. This is probably going down to like five or three V3, whichever. And then this is gonna go out to probably a digital section and then an analog section. So this is basically the block diagram that's being dealt with here. Usually in this type of system where you're probably bringing in like one DC voltage, regulating it down to another DC voltage, and then splitting that off into these different functional blocks, you wouldn't necessarily have this. This could actually be on a different board or on a power adapter. If this were a high power system, you might then wanna integrate everything onto one board because you'd be bringing a plug directly into the board or into the, into the product. It would plug into the power section on the board, then that would regulate down to everything. So think about what happens on like a desktop computer. You know, the power supply is basically integrated into the entire product. It may not be on the same board, but it's definitely in the same, you know, in the same enclosure. Typically what you do when you have this type of system is this whole section would be somewhere else. So think about the power adapter that plugs into the wall. The power adapter that you plug into your wall basically does this. And then you have a cord that carries DC power over to the input regulator on your, uh, on your actual product. Sometimes what'll happen is this is actually integrated onto this system. And then you'll have like an LDO that regulates this down to five volts, or you have a switching regulator on this board that regulates down to five volts. Essentially what this question is asking is, what do I do when I have to integrate all of this stuff onto the same board? So that's what we wanna look at now. Okay, so next I wanna look at what happens when you actually put all of this stuff onto a PCB. Let's just say we have power coming in right here through a cord. So this is basically coming right out of the wall and it's uh, 230 VAC. If you're in the US, it's you know 120 VAC, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Point is, it's AC power coming into the board. It's at you know the wall outlet power. On this board, we wanna know what do we have to do with our grounds? How do we have to arrange our grounds? What exactly are we doing here? So this normally comes in with an earth connection, okay? So there will be an earth connection and I'll explain what you wanna do with that here in just a moment. But typically the way this would work is you would have a ground section over here, which is just gonna be for your input power. And then 
you're gonna have pretty much everything else. Now, you don't need to lay it out like exactly like I've shown here, okay? I'm just, this is just kind of throwing it up on the board to see kind of how to segment out the ground regions. But you could have this entire section cut the board in half. It could be just a small island here however it needs to work for your specific layout. What I want you to focus on though is exactly what to do with these different ground sections. So if you actually look at a schematic with these grounds, what you'll see is that this is normally written as PGND or primary ground, because this is the primary side of our transformer. And our transformer can then bridge the gap between these two. And then if you remember in our earlier video about connecting ground planes using a Y-type capacitor or using a safety capacitor, you would then bridge these two grounds with our cap here. Now here, this other ground region is called SGND or secondary ground, sometimes also called system ground, number of different ways you could interpret the acronym SGND. But in this context with power systems, SGND is your secondary ground, okay? Meaning it's on the secondary side of the transformer. Then this can come out to our regulator circuitry, and then this can come out to maybe a uh, power rail or a bus bar or whatever it needs to be. Could be a power plane internally. Um, you could have a layer that just has some larger power rails on it. Then it supports some other routing for your components. And then this is just gonna go to all the rest of your components. So maybe this comes out at like, let's say five volts. Maybe this is like your you know, MCU or something like this. And then you have all your IOs. The question now asks, what do we do with the analog section? Well, you, you definitely wanna make sure that you keep your analog stuff and your digital stuff relatively separate over the same plane. Now, if this is a true mixed signal system, what that means is that your analog section, so basically this section is gonna have to interact somehow with your digital section over here on this side of the board. This is not like the specific way to lay out every mixed signal board. This is just kind of schematically to show you where stuff goes and how to keep stuff separate. But the idea here is that on the secondary ground side, we have uniform ground and we put the analog and the digital stuff over this uniform ground area. And then all of this stuff on the input side has its own ground area. And that's why we have these two different ground nets, primary ground and secondary ground. So this nicely separates everything and ensures that any return paths over here in this ground plane stay in this ground plane. So that's really the important thing when you're dealing with uh, mixed signal boards or you're dealing with an analog section and a digital section. Essentially, you need to make sure that these return paths don't interfere with each other. But the return path doesn't go like this from the analog section back over to here. So the analog return path doesn't go like this. That doesn't happen. And it can't happen because we have this gap here between our input power side and our output power side. Same thing with the digital section. I could draw this same loop. This actually doesn't happen. What actually happens is the current loops or the return current only exist in this section of the board. So this is where you need to worry about tracking your return currents. What happens on, with the primary side return currents? Where do they exist? Well, they basically just exist in the big loop like this on the primary side, and that's it. So it's pretty simple. I mentioned earlier that there's a PE connection coming in here if this is coming out of the wall. Now, you don't have to do this, but generally when you're plugging in like a typical wall, uh, wall power outlet in here into the wall and then bringing it into a device, you may have a PE connection that comes with it. So what happens to the PE connection? I'll show a uh, schematic here in just a moment for a power system and that shows exactly how this is used. But for now, I can just kind of explain that this is actually used to dump EMI into the ground connection and take it back to earth. This is really important because you may actually have some input EMI filters on this side of the board. So when I say an EMI filter, we're not just talking about like a ferrite bead, we're actually talking about like discrete filter circuits that are built on this input power side. And then those can be used to allow EMI, uh, mostly at high frequencies, to just then return to earth through this PE connection. Now, you're not necessarily taking like 
the actual return current at high current and going through the PE connection because that's not what a PE connection is for. That's not how this all works. This is really just either common mode or differential mode noise, which is already gonna be at very low level and isn't going to present any kind of safety hazard. That's gonna then gonna flow back through here and go back to PE. So let's take a look at an example schematic and hopefully that'll show you how that connection is actually made back to PE on the input power side. Now, last point, we don't always have that connection on the secondary side. On the secondary side, we may have a mounting hole that actually connects back to chassis. So if you look at the earlier video that we have, and we'll link to it in the description on mounting holes, that will actually explain how you can actually use mounting holes to make a connection between your system grounds, so all the stuff over here, and then the protective earth through the chassis. Now remember, protective earth is not being used as a return current path, it's being used as a shield, or it's being used as a place to dump ESD or any noise should it occur, so that way it doesn't interfere with your circuits. So let's take a look at a schematic and hopefully they'll reveal how to make this actual connection. Hey everybody, so I'm inside of Altium Designer right now and I just wanna kinda of show how to make some of these connections. So right now I'm just adding in uh, some different components. Um, I'm gonna add in a bridge rectifier and then uh, I'll add in I'll add in a cap over here too, just to kind of show where the cap goes. So usually you'll have a cap right here. And this is basically a line to neutral cap. Um, so if you are gonna do this, you need to put, uh, or make sure that you select a cap that can handle enough voltage between line and neutral. And um, I'm just gonna leave the reference designators alone for now. Um, but basically, you know, you're making the connections like this. And then here we're ready to basically handle our, our ground and power buses. Um, so here with ground, uh, you know, we just put this right here. And so this is your unisolated case, meaning you're coming in with two wires and then you have a ground region on the board. You don't actually have a PE connection. So there's no protective earth connection. So that would be like having a two prong plug going into the wall and then taking power directly onto a board. And then, you know, you go over here to a rectifier. Obviously, you know, you probably have like a transformer. You're going to step that down, of course. Um, but I'm just kind of modeling this right now as having, you know, this, uh, this voltage source just as being an AC source. And then that comes over here to this, uh, this diode, uh, this diode rectifier bridge. Um, so, Sometimes you will actually not just kind of do this, but you may actually put, you know, a transformer here, or not a transformer, but a a, a coupled a a coupled transformer, or coupled inductors. Um, so this is a choke, um, and you know I'm using a, a the transformer uh, or the coupled trans uh, the coupled inductor transformer model. Uh, uh, symbol here, um, but really this is just meant to be a common mode choke. So this is often used on power systems as an input EMI filter, and it provides a uh, really nice reduction in noise. Um, and it would basically come in like this. And then again, you'd have the ground arrangement here. Now, you know, if you have a, a protective earth connection on like a high power, uh, a high power system, what you might do is instead of having just one cap here, um, what you might do is actually put a cap here, Put another cap here and then your protective ground earth connection comes off between these two like this so this is something you'll actually see on on reference designs uh, for for uh, power products um, and it'll be kind of an input filter and ground connection stage uh, like this um, and then you know there will probably be some resistors and, and some other components so you know I'm over generalizing a little bit um, but this is kind of how that ground connection might be made with an input EMI filter stage it's basically between these two capacitors um, so that's where the, the protective ground connection comes in um, here you know normally this would be on the other side of a transformer so you've already stepped down somewhere in here where my mouse is uh, to your AC voltage which then gets rectified and so it's on that right side or that secondary side of that transformer where you would have a different ground net which is what I'm showing here okay so that's really important so you know here this would basically be not GND but this would be PE and then this would be one of your two, one of your ground uh, connections. Um, so that's how you can add this in schematically. Um, so if you ever see uh, some uh, reference designs for like a power supply, um, I know Texas Instruments does this quite a bit. Um, this is this is why they do that. This is how they make that 
that uh, reference or, or a, that's a protective earth connection uh, back through an input EMI filter stage. All right, everybody. So one thing that you should have learned by now, if you've watched a lot of the videos, is that grounding is one of the major things to think about when you're worried about EMI and EMC. And many EMC failures are caused by a bad grounding strategy. Okay, so all of this stuff that we've been talking about relates to that. And a big part of it is what happens over here on the secondary side. Again, the secondary side is the area where you might be able to mix and mingle some analog and digital stuff in their own sections above the ground plane, but you keep that bad boy solid. That way these components can interact with each other in the way that you need them to to produce your functionality without routing over any big gaps that then produces an EMI problem. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Check out some of the blogs that we got in the uh, description. Hopefully that'll uh, give you some more guidance on how to work with all of this. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.